What is up guys? Joe from JS Playcraft, bringing you another knife review. Now, I gotta get some knife reviews out. I got a lot to do. I'm gonna be starting with this Ned Foss. Just wanted to let you guys know, this video and all of its details was shot entirely with the Galaxy S23 Ultra. Let me know what you think. Now, I've been freaking, my dyslexia has been kicking in like crazy when I'm trying to say the name of this company. I keep on saying Ned Floss. I keep on thinking Floss, 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 whatever. It's Ned Foss, okay? <laughs> Ned Foss is the company that this knife is coming from. Rory, which is pretty cool dude, he reached out to me. He had asked me, like I said in another video, would you uh, want to review some of our products? And I'm like, yeah, okay. So this is the first of the knives that he had sent me. I'm gonna try to take a page from Donnie's book and I'm gonna try to do a two-part review for you with some of these knife reviews. Not all of them, but some of them. Let's see how it works out. So this way, not to make it too long of a video, having you know the detailed uh, details of the knife, what I like or don't like about the contours, holding it and all that, and then also getting into demonstrations and the cutting videos. And Rory was very, very specific with me and said, Said, oh, make sure you go outside and you do cutting video. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's no other way to do it. You got to see the knife work. It could look good. It could feel good. But if it doesn't work and it doesn't do what you want it to do, then what good is a good camping fixed blade survival knife going to be? This is it, guys. This is the uh, Ned Foss. This is listed as the hunting knife with sheath. Okay. It's a uh, about 10 and, uh, 10 and a half inches overall on this knife. And it's supposedly on their website, if you really look at their website, it looks like it's it's more for hunting, fishing, uh, survival, bushcrafting, stuff like that. Basically a good camping knife. If you guys know my channel, you know I like quality stuff. I love having quality knives, things that basically have quality in hand. Now, that doesn't necessarily have to mean high price. You can still have quality without having the high price. Obviously you do get what you pay for in life. So when you do spend a lot of money or a lot, you know, you, you bring up the dollar signs on somebody's fixed blades, you do get really good quality stuff, good quality super steels, edge retention, yada, yada, yada. But if you're a casual camper or if you just basically even a, a very frequent, uh, you frequent camping a lot and you go through a lot of knives and you don't want to go through expensive knives, this might be an option for you. I mean, $29.99, guys. Ned Foss is basically, uh, what I've seen from them is the fact that they're giving you knives at a very budget price point, but you got some quality there. You got some usability there. You got a knife that you can actually go out and take a look at. So that's what I'm looking at with this knife. I'm, I've seen it on other Ned Foss designs. I haven't seen it specifically on this one. So we'll go through all the details now. And then we'll go into the cutting video. So we start here, guys, and you have the leather th sheath. And now, I don't know if you do the smell test, it doesn't really smell like leather or very good quality leather. So it might be like a pleather type of material. The stitching is good, though. It's it's a little flimsy, but it's it does a job. It holds it in place. There's no problem. You can definitely uh, squeeze on it. It's like a soft type of material, leather or pleather or whatever you want to call it. But... It does the job and the stitching is pretty good and the uh, the sides with the, the harder uh, part, part of the leather holds the knife in place. So it does what it's supposed to do at $29.99. I'm gonna be saying that shit a lot, sorry. If you don't keep this buttoned up, this kind of the, uh, the dangler here, the belt dangler kind of just moves out of place and it doesn't really stay very tight here. So you make sure that when you have this on that you have this bolted in or this thing could kind of really slip out. And if you look at it, guys, it's just it's kind of like a flimsy sheath. But again, you can't expect, you know, crazy air craftsmanship at that price point when you're looking at the sheath that comes with the knife. OK. It's, you got to kind of save money somewhere, but for all intents and purposes, this does the job. All right, so you have the knife right here, guys. Now, it, it is a sharp looking knife. I mean, if you see even some of the detailed images that I took around this knife, it is a pretty good looking knife. I mean, I love that bit, big up sweep, that uh, swedge that they have here. You have the thicker part here of the, of the spine and then it has a really very exaggerated or very pronounced buoy up swedge, you know, 
type of point that it comes into because it is called a buoy knife, uh, buoy blade. It has a really big ricasso here that basically, uh, you know, falls so you can kind of get your hand on it. Now, there's just... Again, I like the blade. I like the blade uh, grinds and all that. It looks good. I love the look of all this. The handle is pretty good. It's like a black wood, I think, handle. The uh, recessed uh, pins are pretty good. I can feel it a little bit, but nothing at all that would be discomfort. You have the, uh, it's obviously full tang all the way around, which is always a big plus. You got the pommel here, stainless steel, and then you got the stainless steel guard. Now, what throws me off a little bit on this, guys, is the fact that not down here, okay, because this is fine. I mean, I can live with that, having that piece right there to guard, and it keeps your, your hand in place. What I don't like is right here, because now if you want to kind of jimp this or get a little tighter look, feel on this, there's not really jimping that you can do here, because you look, look at where your thumb is, and this, it just, you feel like you want to kind of hold this a little bit tighter, because the handle is not crazy large. So if you have a very large hand, I mean, I, I just make it with large hands, but if you have a very large hand, you're going to want to kind of like take a different grip of this and get a little tighter and with this little hump here it doesn't make you do that so my personal and that this is not coming from a knife designer or anything like that this is coming from an end user to be comfortable i feel like they either needed to shave that off and make this completely smooth so you can utilize the finger jimping or have some jimping here so you can really get a better grip on this knife which is a really nice blade it's a really good looking good size blade feeling like you want to take a better grip here this needed to be either shaved down or maybe angled in a way angled so it goes into the ricasso a little bit so you have more of this up here and you still can have the guard with the uplift but have it over here because this is all wasted space anyway because you can't really use any part of this knife right here it's just more or less just for the look so since you have that wasted space maybe bring the guard a little bit higher or shave it down have some finger jimping here so you can really get a nice grip of the knife now this finger choil here it's, i guess it's a finger choil but I feel like it's a finger chore for maybe like a, a two-year-old because I could barely, I have to kind of really wedge my finger in there. So it's not really a very usable finger choil if you have, you know, any type of man size hands. <laughs> it kind of just, uh, and look at that blade, guys. It's really, it's a nice looking blade. I really do like look at the look of this blade, the blade grind and all that. It's really a handsome looking blade with that up swift with the buoy. But yeah, this is just all of this here. They needed to change. If they're going to put a finger choil here, they needed to start here and have more <laughs> space so your finger can physically fit in here. And maybe the guard needed to be either shaved down or moved up or angled in a way so you can get a better grip. Now, if they did that with this knife, it is a good looking knife, but it would be more of a better usability on the knife if they designed this guard a little bit differently. They designed the finger choil a little bit uh bigger and they use this this you know ricasso this fake part of the knife this unusable part of the knife and utilize it more to be able to get a better grip on the really impressive looking blade that i'm ho hoping would perform as good as they say it does on the website so it's a ned foss knife to fix blade the ego say it's non-slip we'll see how that works out when i do some cutting it's got a leather or pleather or type of leather sheath uh, wood handle, it's got a, it's black, like a black wood handle. The blade material says only stainless steel, so I can't really assume exactly what stainless steel it is, but it also is, says that it's made for corrosion resistance and durability and all that. But again, we'll see how that fares out, you know, once we do the cutting. The blade length is about five inches. The theme of this knife is sport or outdoor. The item weight is about 10 ounces. The blade shape is a really handsome looking clip point. The blade edge is convex. The overall length of the whole knife is 10 and a half inches. And the item number or the item field is called Tiger. It's a Tiger buoy. Full tang, pretty good looking, nice looking uh, fit and finish for the most part. We'll see how that fit and finish holds up when we do the uh, some demonstrating on the knife. But it is pretty a pretty good looking knife. And again, guys, for about 30 bucks, if this thing, as good as it looks right now, if this thing can perform 
normal wood test, batoning, and I'll, I won't go easy on it. I'm going to do some heavy batoning on it, heavy cutting on the wood, skinning, uh, some bark skinning, whatever. I'm going to see what I could throw at it to see how this holds up. You know, heavy downward throws, see if anything wiggles or starts rattling or anything like that. If this knife holds up for about 30 bucks, looking at the way it does, even with the little drawbacks of the little discomfort here and there, it's still, you can get, you can get it done. You can get it done. And again, you can't complain for the price point. It's still a pretty good knife if it holds up on the test. So that'll be part two, guys, is going to be the testing of this knife. Look out for part two, a Ned Floss buoy. I think that's what I'm going to be calling it. And uh, we'll see how this holds up. And then I will give you an overall to see, hey, you got a great freaking deal for 29 bucks or you got an okay deal for 29 bucks, 30 bucks. It's okay. It'll get you through a weekend or whatever. So we'll see what we got, guys. Until the next Sword of Knife video, hopefully the next Ned Foss video. See you when I see you. Peace out, everybody. Ciao.